Good morning, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, good evening, Temple of Faith. Welcome to wonderful Wednesday night Bible study. It is Wednesday night. It is Wednesday night. We are in the month of February. We're in the month of February. We're in the month of February. We certainly invite you to come on in and prepare ourselves for the word of God tonight. We're excited about teaching Bible study. We've been teaching about uh, upgrades. We've looked at various scriptures uh, throughout the Bible, and it has been amazing uh, to see how God works and God moves in the upgrade situation. So uh, we certainly invite you to come on in and to prepare yourselves, to prepare yourselves for another wonderful Wednesday night Bible study, another wonderful Wednesday night Bible study. Another Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, so we welcome you to come on in to be with us and to be a part of. Hey, German, German, number one, number one pastor, number one member, one, number one, Jay, Jay, you got to jump back in that ocean with me and do a little bit of scuba diving. You got to do a little bit of uh, scuba diving with me. We're going to go ahead and get started with prayer. Oh, God, please thank you. We thank you, Lord, for being with us another night of Bible study. We've come now to uh, Bible study in the month of February. We thank you for all that we learned in January. Now may we learn more, do more, see more, know more in February. Open our eyes, open our minds, open our hearts, open our spirits so that we may receive the word of God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. So we welcome you in tonight. I want you to turn your Bibles to Mark. Mark, the oldest of the four gospels. Mark, the one who the other gospels use as a reference uh, to for a, a resource for their material as they write about the life of Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we invite you to turn with us to the eighth chapter of the book of Mark, the gospel of Mark. Good, good evening, Rachel. The gospel of Mark, the eighth chapter, verse 22, Mark 8, 22, New International Version of the Bible. They came to Bethsaida and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. And they came to Bethsaida. They came to Bethsaida and people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes, and put his hands on him. Jesus asked, do you see anything? Verse 24, he looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. They look like trees walking around. Verse 25, once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. Verse 26, Jesus went, sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. Don't even go into the village. Tonight, I want to teach from the subject, delayed, delayed upgrades, delayed upgrades, delayed upgrades. This story, the blind man uh, I'm teaching this intentionally because I got such a great report from my ophthalmologist on um, on yesterday, Dr. Shamor, Shamor Atul, Atul out in Douglasville. A year ago, I was I was at risk of losing sight in both eyes, laser surgery and injections in both eyes. So yesterday, the doctor tells me he looks dilated my eyes, looked in them. Uh, both of them, I had to look left, I had to look right, I had to look down, I had to look up. He said, brother, man, your eyes are excellent. It's, he said, somehow my eyes have reverted back to my 20s. So this story tonight, man, I can relate to this story tonight in many different ways. Um, I, 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 I call this Bible study tonight delayed upgrades. If you've ever flown, had a flight, especially out of Atlanta, because we're the world's largest and busiest airport, do you, yes, right, all praise to God, Rachel, um, you've, you've experienced a delay. Your, your flight can be delayed. 
It does not mean that the flight's not going to come. Does not mean that the plane's not going to take off. It can be delayed. You're supposed to leave at 11. You may end up leaving at 1140. You may end up leaving at 12. Sometimes in traffic, we're delayed, especially if you live in this city, the downtown greater connector, you can be delayed. 75, 85, you can be delayed. So life is filled with delays. You may be in line for a promotion at your job and it gets delayed. So delaying is a natural part of life. Everything is not instant, y'all. Everything is not microwavable. That's right, I got vision upgrade. Everything is not microwavable. Everything is not like popcorn put in the microwave, pop, pop, boop, pop, pop, and it ends up coming out. There are moments uh, that things are delayed. Sometimes it's out of your control. Sometimes it's out of my control. Delays are a part of life. They're a part of life. How we handle our delays says a lot about our patience. How we handle our delays says a lot about our patience. How we handle our delays says a lot about our maturity. How we handle our delays says a lot about our patience and our maturity. Our patience and our maturity. How we respond to when things are moving slow or slow season. Anybody has ever had a slow season in your life? Anybody ever had a situation in your life where you were waiting for something and it didn't happen then? Anybody ever had a situation in your life? You were waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. So how we respond to delays has a lot to do with our patience and our maturity. Also, how we respond to delays has a lot to do with our faith in God. It has a lot. Sometimes we can be impatient. Sometimes we can be antsy. Sometimes we can be moody. Sometimes, depending on the delay, we can be nervous. So we come to this story tonight. In my mind, uh, it is all about a delayed promotion. Mark, the eighth chapter, verse one, they came to Bethsaida. So this comes after, um, this comes uh, after the, the, the yeast of the Pharisees and Herod um, and the bread story. So it, 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 Jesus comes on the end and talk, after having taught them, they come to this little country villa, Bethsaida. And some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. So the people in this region, in this resort city of Bethsaida, they had heard about the miraculous power of Jesus. I've told you often this year in 2024, Talk about what Jesus has done in your life. Talk about the moves that God has made in your life. Talk about the promotions that you've already received. Talk about the goodness of God in your life. Talk about the goodness of God. So the word had gotten out that Jesus was a healer. The same Jesus who healed in the Bible still heals today. On February the, what's today's date? The 8th, the 7th, February the 7th, 2024. That same Jesus still heals. The same Jesus who saved in the Bible still saves. The same Jesus who moved then moves now. The same Jesus who loved then loves now. So they had gotten word out. So the people brought a blind man and begged. Just, the blind man was incapable of bringing himself. The blind man could not bring himself. He had to have someone to be with him. Look at this. The, some people brought a blind man. Relationships are very important. Relationships are very important. You never know when you need help from someone else. You need to have at least two or three close friends in your life, close people in your life that you can count on. Let me tell you something. As you age, you learn who you can count on and who you cannot count on. As the, as the weeks turn into months, as the months turn into years, and as the years turn into decades, you really discover who you can count on. You really decide, can know who's in your corner. At your age tonight, I'm 58, you need to know, whatever your age is, who can you count on? Who's in your corner? I need three people who are paying attention to writing the screen. Who's in my corner? Who's in my corner? Who is in my corner? 
You need to know who's for you. You need to know who's team Clayton. You need to know who's team Kimberly. You need to know who's team Jarman. You need to know who's team Doc Rachel. You need to know who's team Beverly. You need to know who's team uh, Deborah Holloman. You need to know who's team Augustus. Who's in your corner? You'll be surprised. Some people you think in your corner are not in your corner. And some people you think that are not in your corner are in your corner. I need, I want to put a new term in your spiritual lexicon. Corner discernment. Corner discernment. You need to have discernment about who is in your corner. Who is with you? Who is on your team? Who's pulling for you? Who's chip? The man was incapable. You need people at some season in your life who can help you do what's a struggle for you to do. You need people in your life. Corner discernment. Love it. Love it, Clayton. Corner discernment. Okay? And begged Jesus to touch him. This means desperation. They begged. The Bible did Mark, the original gospel. Mark did not say they asked Jesus. Mark says they begged. This man was situation was dire. His situation had stressed him out. His situation caused his friends to care. The greatest gift anyone can give you is not money, not things, but the greatest gift anyone can give you is to care about you. Even mean people want to be cared about. Some people are mean because no one cares about them. They beg Jesus. They plead with him, Mr. Jesus, do for him what you've done for others. They, they are sincere. You need sincere people in your life. You don't need Draculas in your life. You don't need vampires in your life. You don't need takers in your life. You need sincere people in your life. Another word for your spiritual lexicon, sincerity discernment. Sincerity discernment. Some people are with you as long as you have. Some people along with you are with you as long as your credit card has this great line of credit. They're with you if your credit card has no limit. They're with you as long as you foot in the bill. You ever had people in your life who were with you because you were footing the bill? You were paying for everything? You, you, you invite y'all go out to dinner and they say, you know what? I don't have no money. They knew they didn't have no money before they left home. Can you get me this time? The sincerity discernment. Sincerity discernment. They were sincere. Because number one, they brought the man to Jesus. Number two, they begged Jesus. They petitioned Jesus on behalf of the man. Ooh. Sometimes you need somebody who can speak on your behalf. Sometimes you need somebody who will speak up for you. Sometimes you need somebody to advocate you for you. Another word for your spiritual lexicon. Another word for your spiritual lex lexicon. Good advocation, good advocates, good advocates, that someone can advocate for you in a good way, that they can advocate for you in a positive way. And no, it was more than one person says some people, sometimes you need more than one, depending on what your situation is. And they begged Jesus to touch it. Now, obviously they had heard that, G that's right, Rachel, good advocates. They had heard that Jesus had touched some folk in the past. And had healed them. They'd heard that. So now. They asked Jesus. To touch them. There are moments in your life. There are seasons in my life. We, we need people who can advocate for exactly. What we need. He didn't need, a, he didn't need new clothes. He didn't need a new house. He didn't need a new donkey to ride. What he needed was his eyesight. You need people who understand your needs. If you're in a marriage or a relationship and the person can never discern what your needs are, that's not good. That's not healthy. That's not positive. You ever heard people say they are so in love that when one of them speaks, the other can finish their sentence because they know their needs. They know the needs. They know what the person stands in need of. They beg Jesus to touch him. Verse 23, good thing about the Lord, when we get Jesus' attention, the game changes. When we get Jesus' attention, the game changes. 
When we get into the presence of the Lord, things change. When, when the Holy Spirit showers upon us, things change. Look at this. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Amazing. Jesus pulls him out of the crowd. Sometimes when God works, he works with us in isolation. Sometimes God works with us outside of the noise. Sometimes God works with us outside the cameras. Sometimes God works out works with us outside of the glare of social media. Somebody type on the screen, isolation development, isolation development. God intervenes sometimes on a solo. God does not appear to Moses and Moses' wife. God does not appear to Moses initially. God does not appear to Moses and his brother Aaron together. God does not appear to Moses and Miriam, his sister, together. On the backside of the desert, it's just Moses and God because God says the ground you stand on is holy. Get them shoes off. Isolation development. Some of the greatest growth in your life occurs away from people. It occurs away from the stage. It occurs in isolation. Elijah hears the still small voice. David is alone when he says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want isolation. Development. Jesus leads the man outside of the village, away from the crowd, away from the noise. Sometimes Rachel, sometimes Kimberly, sometimes Deacon Clayton, sometimes Ayadeli, sometimes Jarman. You've got to get away from the noise. Sometimes it's hard to hear God through the noise. Sometimes it's difficult to hear God because of the noise. Jesus gets the man outside of the village. Isolation development leads to individual blessing. Oh, I need somebody to put that on the screen. Isolation development leads to individual blessing. Isolation development leads to individual blow up. Isolation development leads to a delayed upgrade. Oh, 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 look at this. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him. Now, one reason that Jesus works this miracle in isolation. Can you imagine what people would have said to Jesus if they had seen him spit on that man? Can you imagine what some of the people over in College Park in East Point in Raleigh, North Carolina would have said if they saw Jesus spit on that man? Look at it. He spit on his eye. When he spits on his eye. Very good, Rachel. Isolation development leads to individual blessings. Some of my best blessings in my life, the biggest blessings have come when it was just me alone with God talking. Listen, I don't, I don't, even though I give y'all testimonies, I don't testify about everything that God does in my life. So listen, listen, listen. When he had spit on the man's eyes, that, that would seem to be nasty. You know, you was a little kid, say, you better not spit on me. To spit on someone is a sign of disrespect. To spit on someone is nasty. To spit on someone is unsanitary. To spit on someone is unclean. Yet, this is holy spit. <laughs> This ain't regular spit. This is holy spit. This is anointed spit. Now I know that would seem to be a bit oxymoronic. Holy spit. Oxymoronic. Colossal contradiction. Holy spit. Jesus spits on the man's eyes. Spits on the man's eyes. When we ask God for a blessing, we don't get to determine how he's going to do it. Somebody missed a shout. Somebody missed your breakthrough. You can't ask God to give you a brand new car and then tell him what, how quick he better get that car to you. God is under no obligation to do anything on my time schedule, your time schedule. But God is obligated to keep his word. <laughs> God is not obligated to work on a time schedule. But God is obligated to keep his word. God is not obligated to do it on Friday or Saturday or Sunday, but he's obligated to keep his word because the Bible says God is not like man that he would lie. 
<laughs> the Bible says when he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, he spits and touches. Holy spit and a touch. Jesus asked him, do you see anything? Do you see anything? <laughs> Jesus asked the blind man, do you see anything? We know he's blind. Do you see anything? Verse 24, he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking around. <laughs> this is the only miracle in the Bible but performed by Jesus. This is the only miracle where you're going to have two phases to securing the sight of a blind person. Because, you know, Bartimaeus was healed immediately. The two men, blind men by the wayside were healed immediately. This man, his vision comes back, but it ain't 2020 yet. <laughs> his vision comes back, but it ain't 2030 yet. It ain't 2050 yet. His, his, his vision comes back, but it's a little blurry. He cannot discern the difference between trees and people. He cannot discern the difference between trees and people. He cannot discern. Look at this. The Bible says, when he spit on the man's eyes, he asked him, do you see anything? Verse 24, he looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. So he saw Deaconess Clayton, but she had leaves on her ears. He saw Kimberly, but she had a bird nest in her wig. He saw Rachel, but Rachel had brown leaves on her toes. So he could see, but he could not see clearly. Let me help somebody tonight. Let me help somebody tonight. It is the will of God for you to see clearly. Just hold that. I'm going to come back to that later. He sees people, but he, tell, he tells Jesus, I can see him. I see Peter, I see James, I see John, I see my boys who brought me to you, but they look like trees walking around. Those 12 apostles with you, they, they look like trees walking around. Sometimes we can see something and it's not really what we see. Sometimes we can hear something and it's not really what we heard. Sometimes. We can hear something, but it's not what we really heard. We have to have clarity. That's a new word for your spiritual lexicon. I want you to write this, this, this phrase on the screen. I want you to write this phrase that I'm about to give and give you time to get your, get your fingers on the keyboard. We must have clear clarity. Clear clarity. Look at verse 25. Once more, Jesus put his hand on the man's eyes. So his, his 2020 vision has been delayed. His 2030 vision has been delayed. His 2050 vision has been delayed. We began this Bible study by talking about understanding delays. Delays are a sign of impatience or immaturity sometimes. Clear clarity. Clear clarity. It's been a delay in his sight development. It has been a delay in his the return of his sight for a whole year, a whole year, my sight progressively increased. Y'all don't even know that. For a whole year. I have never worn glasses, and to this day, I still don't wear glasses. I've never worn contacts. Now, super small print, I have to put on some reading glasses to see it. It was delayed from my first diagnosis until my six-month checkup. It was delayed. It was a work in progress. I need you to put that on the screen. I'm under construction. I'm under construction. Rachel and Kimberly, you knew I was coming to you. Go grab the construction emoji, the construction sign emoji. I'm under construction. Let me tell you something tonight. Don't beat yourself up over the past. You're under construction. Don't beat yourself up over what didn't happen. You're under construction. Don't mope and moan over what you lost. You're under construction. Don't whine. And well, over what was lost, you're under construction. <laughs> ah, guess what? 
To be under construction means God's building a better Rachel. God's building a better Clayton. God's building a better Kimberly. God's building a better Uncle John. God's building a better German. God's building a better Miss Louvenia. God's building a better Dr. Reed. God's building a better Miss Janie Miles Walker the first. I'm under construction. Under construction means you're getting something better. Atlanta is a perpetual city of uh, highway and road construction. We're always building more better roads. I know we don't like sitting on traffic jams on 20, 285, 85, but they're building better roads. Oh, Rachel threw the construction jacket on there. Oh, that gives me inspiration to say this to y'all. Put your construction jacket on and let God rebuild you. <laughs> One of my favorite shows with a kid, my brother, my grandmother, and I used to watch this six million dollar man. We can make a better man, a stronger man, a faster man. Put your construction jacket on and let God rebuild your life. Put your construction jacket on and let God rebuild your dreams. Put your construction jacket on and let God rebuild your hopes, your ambitions. Ooh, I'm under construction. Let me see your hand tonight if you're under construction. Let me hear you see your hand tonight if God is rebuilding your dreams, rebuilding your hopes, rebuilding your desires. I'm under... Rachel, you're too young to know the bionic man, the $6 million man. Rachel, you're too young to know the bionic woman, Lindsay Wagner, Steve Lee Majors. I'm under construction. Let me see your hand tonight if you're under construction. Whether you're 8, 18, or 88, it's a good thing to be under construction. Ah, now, it's never the will of God to keep you under permanent, perpetual construction. But there are construction seasons in your life. Ah! Construction seasons in your life. Construction seasons in your life. Construction seasons in your life. Construct. Wow, Rachel, you watch. But Rachel, you are eighties baby. Rachel, you are eighties baby. Rachel, the eighties were the golden years of my life. The eighties TV shows. The eighties music. Sanford and Son. Maud. Archie Bunker. All in the family. The Jefferson, the Six Million Dollar Man, Emergency One, Lone Ranger, Tonto, Gunsmoke. Those are my shows. That's right, Deacon S. Clayton. Construction seasons in your life. I've never gone through a construction season where I didn't come out better. <laughs> construction seasons are designed to make you better. Construction seasons are designed to make you better. Now look at this. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. So his initial complete vision was delayed. So Jesus touches him again. Listen, listen. Jesus will keep on touching you until you get right. <laughs> Jesus will keep on pushing you until you get where you need to be. Jesus will keep on pulling you until you get where you need to be. It wasn't a two-touch miracle. It was a two-touch miracle. Double touch. Let me tell somebody, double touch equals double blessings. Oh, I hear the Bible screaming across the eons and echoing across the eons. Double for your trouble. Somebody, listen to me tonight because I'm in the prophetic mode. Some of you, for the trouble you had in 2023, God's going to give you double for your trouble in 2024. For some of you, for your struggle last year, you're going to get double for your struggle. Double for my trouble and double for my struggle. I want you to add that to your spiritual lexicon right on the screen. Double for my struggle and double for my trouble. Ow! Double for my trouble, double for my struggle. Double for my trouble, double for my struggle. Listen, the double will be more than the pain you've experienced. A double touch, a double touch, a two-step touch, a two-step miracle. A delayed upgrade. <laughs> God never gives everything to you all at once. Not all the times. Clayton, double for my struggle and double for my trouble. Double for my trouble, double for my struggle. Listen, 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 listen. Sometimes God progressively blesses us. That means over time period, over a period of time, over a season, over time. Now you've heard of progressive insurance for your house and car. I want somebody to write on the screen right now, progressive blessings, progressive blessings, progressive upgrades, progressive upgrades. <laughs> to delay means it's progressive. 
All Kimberly put the exclamation point in red. Double for my trouble, double for my struggle. Listen to this. Progressive blessings. Progressive blessings. Progress. You don't plant peas in April and get peas in May. You get them after their germination period. You get them after they grow. I miss Mother Janetta Player. She says, it takes God time to grow good things. <laughs> Mother Player said it takes time for God to grow good things. So glad you reached out to the pickets today, uh, uh, Deaconess Clayton. Listen, once more Jesus put his hand on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. Uh, 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 uh. Now look, the, the Bible doesn't say in verse 23 that his eyes are open. It, it, his vision was blurry. It says, do you see anything? The man looked up and I see my pe I see people like trees. Now the Bible says his eyes were open. His sight was restored. Now the Bible doesn't say in verse 25, then his eyes were open and his sight was restored. The Bible clearly says, then his eyes were open, comma, his sight was restored. The second touch. The second touch. Sometimes, I want you to hear this. Sometimes God tests us before he gives us the whole hog. Somebody missed that. Sometimes God tests us before he gives us the full blessing. Sometimes God gives you a partial blessing to see how bad you want the bigger blessing. Somebody write on the screen for your spiritual lexicon from partial to full. From partial to full. You can drive a car on E for a period of time, but the car operates better when you got a full tank. Sometimes God gives you a quarter of a tank. Sometimes God gives you half of a tank. And then God gives you a full tank. Add this to your spiritual lexicon. Full tank blessings. <laughs> full tank blessings. Full tank upgrades. Full tank upgrades. Deacon S. Clayton, I got this shirt when we took our boys to Coca-Cola. To the world of Coca-Cola. Listen, listen. Full tank blessings. Full tank blessings. Full tank blessings. Full tank blessings. The Bible says, then his eyes were open. His sight was restored. His sight restored. Let me tell somebody something. This is not only your season of upgrades, but for some of y'all, this is God's season of restoration in your life. Kimberly, I love how you grabbed the gas tank emoji. This is God's season of restoration in your life. This, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't even know who I'm talking to this about. But this is going to be the season of restoration. The, all the money you've lost is coming back. All the money you spent foolishly is coming back. All the money you loaned to somebody who never paid you back, it's coming back. In some iteration, it's coming back. In some form, it's coming back. In some format, it's coming back. This is the season of uh, restoration. Your broken heart in your last season, God's going to restore the broken heart. God's going to restore the broken heart. The betrayal, God's going to heal that betrayal. God's going to restore your youthfulness. <laughs> I don't mean you're going to go from 68 to 18. You're going to have a youthful spirit. Some of you have had a spirit of depression. God's going to restore your positivity. God's going to erase the negativity and replace it with positivity. This is your season of restoration. This is your receive, your season of restoration. This is the season of restoration. This is a season of return. I'm going to add another word to your, your spiritual lexicon. Divine return on investment. <laughs> you, you've heard of ROI, return on investment. So I want you to put uh, D-R-O-I. Type on the screen, D-R-O-I. Divine return on investment. That means God's going to do the restoring. He's going to restore your credit. He's going to restore your FICO score. He's going to restore your good name. He's going to restore your reputation. He's going to restore your mental capacity. You're going to return to the old better you. The old better you. The old better you. The Bible says his 
eyes were open. His sight was restored. Now remember, the problem he had the first time with the spit and the touch, he could see people, but they looked like trees. Look at the end of verse 25. And he saw everything clearly. Now I'm going to read this because you know I got that English degree. Let me, let me read that sentence again. Once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open, comma, no and. His eyes, sight was restored, comma, and he saw everything clearly. We can only see clearly when our eyes are open and our sight has been restored. Now I'm not talking about a physical blindness. I'm now talking about spiritual discernment. God wants you to see clearly. Look at what he says. His sight was restored and he saw everything clear. No more trees. No more fake right, go left. No more go left, fake right. No more go right, fake left. He saw clearly. Some in that last season, we were hurt because we didn't see clearly who was working against us. In that last season, we were betrayed because we couldn't clearly see who was hurting us, who was working against us, who was stabbing us in the back. In that last season, we could not clearly see who the opposition was. In that last season, we could not see the presence of evil. Evil came to us in that last season dressed in good. This is why Jesus said, beware of wolves in sheep clothes. They gave us the okie doke. They faked us. They fooled us. But when Jesus opens our eyes, you can't play me no more. <laughs> I want you to put this on the screen. The capital, capital I, capital C, U. That's abbreviation for I see you. God wants you to see who's against you. God wants you to see who's with you. God wants you to see who's for you. God wants you to see who's on you, you to see who's on your side. You need to ask God for super spiritual discernment. Add that word to your spiritual lexicon. Super spiritual discernment. Super spiritual discernment. The Bible says, and. You can't get to end until your eyes are open. You can't get to end until your sight's been restored. And he saw everything clearly. And he saw everything clearly. And he saw everything clearly. That's right, Rachel. SSD, super spiritual discernment. That's what you got to have. That's why you, you have less pain in your life when you have super spiritual discernment. The greatest line on super spiritual discernment from a human being to me came from Maya Angelou. Maya Angelou, when she said, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. Maya Angelou said, when people show you who they are, believe them the first. That's, that's super spiritual discernment. You, you, has, has anybody watched me ever been fooled by someone, played by someone, used by someone? Well, when you get super spiritual sermon, I don't care if they're family, friend, or foe. You ain't playing me no more. I want that to rhyme. Someone use incorrect grammar. I don't care if they're friend, family, or foe. You ain't going to fool me no more. <laughs> Look at this. He saw everything clearly. Verse 26, the last verse in the Bible, in the, in the scripture, the lesson. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. This is strange. Now, they're, they're, I believe personally, my theological training, my discernment, my prayer meditation on this story. I believe there are two reasons that Jesus told him to go home. Number one, so his family could see the miracle where God, see other people need to see what God has done in your life. Those people in his house never thought he'd see again. They thought he'd never be able to see a bird sitting on tree limbs. They thought he'd never be able to see his mother, his father uh, working and washing clothes. They thought he'd never see a garden again. So, so people close to you need to see what God has done in your life. The people who never people who said you would never be anything or have anything, they need to be see they need to see the car you driving. They need to see the subdivision you live in. They need to see the job that you go to every morning. But the other part here, don't even go into the village. There were doubters in the village. There were folk in the village who would say he wasn't blind in the beginning. There were people in the village who who would try to undermine the miracle. 
There were people in the village who would try to undermine the miracle, try to explain away what Jesus had done for the man. Everybody don't want you to have spiritual discernment. Everybody don't want you to peep their hand. Everybody don't want you to call them out. Oh, the man goes home. He left home that morning blind, but now he goes home with eyesight. <laughs> he left home unable to see. He goes back home seeing. His miracle happened in a progressive way. It was a delayed upgrade. <laughs> there was no need for glasses. There was no need for uh, uh, contact lenses. He got a progressive upgrade. He got a delayed restoration. He got delayed upgrade. If you didn't get an upgrade in January, it's been delayed. It is not going to not happen. It's delayed. Good things come to those who wait. You've heard that your whole life, but I like to add it this way. Great things come to those who wait. Great things come to those who wait. Great things come to those who wait. Oh, it may be delayed, but it's coming. It may not come on Friday, so I'm going to look for it Saturday. If it didn't come Saturday, I'm going to look for it Sunday. If it didn't come Sunday, I'm going to look for it Monday. If it didn't come Monday, I'm going to look for it Tuesday. If it didn't come Tuesday, I'm going to look for it Wednesday. If it didn't come Wednesday, I'm going to look for it Thursday. If it didn't come Thursday, I'm going to look for it Friday. If it didn't come Friday, I'm going to look for it Saturday. What I'm trying to tell you, delay does not mean denial. Delay does not mean defeat. Delay does not mean dubious. Delay does not mean destruction. Delay means it's on its way. <laughs> I want to close with this story right here. It goes perfectly with this uh, with this delayed blessing. In in thirty in the last thirty years of flying, the, the my airline Delta has never lost my bags. I was coming home from my my um, my birthday trip to Cozumel, Mexico, for scuba diving. I travel with one bag with my regular clothes. Then I have an entire dedicated, dedicated large bag that carries all of my scuba diving equipment. I have all, all my scuba diving equipment is carried. Oh, my, my phone's not on silent. All of my scuba diving equipment goes into one particular bag. It goes into one particular bag. So when I came out of cleared customs at the airport, when I came home on the 23rd of January, when I got over to the international conveyor belt, I saw my first bag sitting by itself. But I looked on the conveyor belt. My scuba diving bag was not there. My scuba diving bag was not there. I'm going to go ahead and grab something because I want to use a visual. I, I looked at it and, and all the bags had come off. So I began to walk around the corridor, the corridor of the airport looking on the different conveyor belts to see was my bag there. But my bag was not there. My bag was not there. I kept looking, but there was no bag. I kept searching. So I went over to the agent. I showed him my ticket. He said, your bag is it, it, in the airport. We don't know where it is. I said, well, could you track it? Because I have over $1,500 worth of diving equipment, uh, $2,000 worth of diving equipment, and I need you to find my bag. I was very, very patient. So he called and, and he said, I, 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 it's showing in the airport, but it's not where it's supposed to be. So the man then says to me, he, he says, I got some good news. I, I think we know where it is. I said, well, I don't need you to think. I need you to find where my bag is. I need my bag to be found. So I went and spoke to another person in the airport. He says, I think there's a possibility that the bag could have gone to the other internet. Let's check this out. It could have gone to the other international concourse E instead of being over here where it is. But according to your ticket, the bag is here. He said it was loaded onto the plane. We saw that it came off the plane. We saw that. He said, unfortunately, I think that the bag person put yours in the wrong queue. <laughs> Y'all stay with me. Now, my bag was delayed. My bag was delayed. But he said, I tell you what you do. We have now found your bag. If you go over to this small, oversized conveyor belt. Now, my bag wasn't oversized. He said, when we have lost a bag in the airport or misplaced it, we put it on that belt. He said, you sit on the belt until you hear a beep. When you hear the beep, your bag, that means your bag has now come up. 
I look, look at here. Here is January the 20, January the 23rd. Look at my bag. January the 23rd. Look at my bag. My, I sat on a conveyor belt. My bag was delayed, but it was not denied. My bag was delayed, but not denied. My bag was delayed, but not denied. $2,000 worth of equipment delayed, but not denied. I came to tell you in conclusion tonight, delayed upgrades, delayed upgrades. Delay does not mean denial. Delay does not mean denial. Delay does not mean denial. Delay does not. Spencer God Trail, my homeboy, Baltimore, Georgia. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you for delayed upgrades. The seasoned saints will want to say, he may not come when you're calling, but he's always on time. Thank you for every miracle that comes on time. Thank you for every breakthrough that comes on time. Thank you for every delayed upgrade that comes on time. Thank you for every dollar that comes on time. Thank you for the security that comes on time. Thank you for the, 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 the peace of mind and the comfort and care that comes on time. So we appreciate progressive blessings. We appreciate progressive development. Give us greater discernment so we can see clearly. We thank you for DROI, divine return on investment. We thank you like this blind man in the Bible that in strange ways you restore our sight. In strange ways we see what we've never seen before. We thank you for delayed baggage that when the buzzer goes off, we can get it off the conveyor belt. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Let me see your hand tonight if you're blessed by this Bible study. Hold that hand up if you now understand discernment, divine return on investment, progressive blessings, progressive blessings. Um, it's time for our offering. There are three ways you can give. The first way, Cash App, Augustus Ministries. Cash App, Augustus Ministries. Second way you can give, go to the church website, www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org, online giving, PayPal, PayPal. The last way you can give, give on the church, Giveify app. The Giveify app is Temple of Faith Bible Church. Hashtag uh, Augustus Ministries for Cash App. Um, PayPal, www.templeoffaithbiblechurch.org. And then Giveify app, Temple of Faith Bible Church. Man, let me tell y'all something. What a Bible study tonight. Delayed upgrades. So if you didn't get it in January, man, God got 11 more months to give it to you. Jeremy said both hands up. Yeah, that bag, God told me to take a picture of that bag because I was going to use it in a Bible study or a sermon or an illustration. So I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I was able to uh, use that tonight. It, it was delayed. It didn't, it, it didn't come with my other bag. Both of those bags were on the same flight. Both of those bags were on the same flight from Cozumel. But because one person, this is how the, the managers, they, they got him to do his job. Because one person put my bag in the wrong queue. It was delayed. It was in the airport the whole time. It was just delayed getting to me. What God has for you, it's out there. It's just being delayed. Oh, the last thing, please, please take with you, you're under construction. Put on your construction jacket like Rachel challenged us and let God rebuild your mind, body, spirit. Mind, body, and spirit. Uh, Friday morning, join us for fresh, fr right on cue, Clayton. Join us for fresh Friday prayer call. Deaconess Allison, you wrote me a message on message. I wrote you back. I hadn't heard back from you. I need you to verify that you received that scholarship money for your, in your son's name. You did not reply to that. Uh, Fresh Friday prayer call, Friday morning, 7 a.m. No, uh, no, um, no, uh, street ministry this week. We'll be back on Sunday morning. Now, God has led me to continue the story of Abraham. You know, we, we, we dealt with Abraham on Sunday morning. Uh, uh, well, God, I promise to bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. We saw the blessings of God uh, moving in the life of Abraham. So tune in. I'm going to next, until we finish this series on Abraham, that's why we'll be on every Sunday morning, the upgrades in Abraham's life. Okay, who, who am I going to get to say good night to? May the Lord, may the Lord let my delayed upgrades become real-time upgrades. And watch between me and thee while we're absent, one from another. Amen. Amen. We're going to see you Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Who am I going to say get to say good night to before we... Ah, oh, Rachel, good night up in North Carolina. North Carolina. 
North Carolina. So glad to have each of you. Uh, good evening to Mother uh, M Mother Gaddis, who will be watching over on YouTube. She'll be watching YouTube replay. You have a good evening too, Kimberly.